Hey everyone, today we're gonna make a neat loaf, which is basically a meatless meatloaf. This uh, recipe is fantastic for a meatless Monday or just any day of the week you wanna try to incorporate a little more plant-based eating into your diet. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is, if you aren't using canned lentils, we're gonna have to make the lentils because this recipe calls for two cups of cooked lentils. If you're gonna use a pressure cooker to cook your lentils, it's pretty easy. It's a one cup lentils to two cups water and you, you know, set it on high pressure for nine minutes, so. That's what I'm gonna do. I got this giant bag of lentils. Can't ever get enough lentils. It is an excellent meat replacement. Okay, so we got one cup here. One cup of lentils. Okay, so I'm just gonna rinse these out. All right, so I'm gonna add two cups of water to the pressure cooker. And like I said before, you don't have to, you don't have to cook lentils this way. I just like how hands off this, this method is. All right, and then we stick the pot into the pressure cooker. Put on the lid. Uh, make sure it's on ceiling if you're using a pressure cooker, of course. All right, I'm gonna need to dice about two cups or two large handfuls of kale. And it doesn't really matter what kind of kale you use. This is red kale. I'm gonna cut around the rough parts here. This part here just doesn't uh, cook and blend up very well. So it's best to remove it. I've put whole pieces of kale into my smoothies before, and if you got the you got the rough stuff in there, it doesn't blend out. It doesn't blend down very well. I'm just gonna roughly chop this. Doesn't really matter how I cut this because I'm gonna cook it up and I'm gonna process it. So just a rough chop, enough enough to be able to kind of measure how much you got here. Roughly two cups. Eh, see. About about two cups, maybe a little bit more. Won't mess up your recipe, you'll just get a little more nutrition in there. Now I'm gonna dice up a whole medium onion. Um, I like to use yellow onions because they're pretty versatile, but um, a white onion is fine as well. And then we can just do like a medium dice. Again, this stuff is gonna get blended up a little bit. Set the kale and diced onion aside. We can make room for the rest of these delicious veggies. All right, it was a good thing I chopped up that onion quickly because I'm already feeling the tears coming on. All right, now we're gonna dice up the three carrots that we peeled. Just having these first, you wanna put it flat side down so you get some more stability and you don't, don't cut your fingers. I just want to cut these up small enough that they'll be able to cook in the pan. All right, I'm gonna put these carrots on plate two. So set those aside. I'm gonna keep your vegetables a little separate though because I'm gonna put them in at slightly different times. All right, and now I'm going to cut and mince up my mushrooms. I like to make this minced up really well. It just kind of helps the density and texture of the meatloaf. So, so I like to dice it up for that reason. Mince it up, mince it up, small mince. And if you have anybody in the house that has a problem with mushrooms, they probably won't know that it's in there. But how can you not like mushrooms? Be careful to not cut myself with this. So I'm gonna keep my hand in a little bit of a claw here. All right, and I think that's about good. It does not need to be perfect. They don't need to all be the same size or anything like that. 
but the processor is going to process these mushrooms a little bit as well. But I wanted to make sure that I got as many small pieces as I can because we're not going to process it for too long. We're just going to process it enough to break up some of the beans and the veggies enough so that they can bind together. All right, last thing to prep. I'm gonna mince up three cloves of garlic. All right, we're gonna mince this up. All right, now we have all of our vegetables prepped and ready to go. All right, now I'm just gonna get the oven started and uh, heat the oil in our saucepan, and then we can start co cooking the vegetables. Cooking the vegetables, not cocking the vegetables. Cooking the vegetables. <laughs> All right, we're gonna bake this at 400 degrees. All right, and then I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of oil, um, olive oil is my preference, into the pan and turn it up to about a medium high. All right, once that pan is hot, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add the carrots to the pan first and cook it for about a minute, just to give it a head start because carrots take longer to cook than kale and onions and mushrooms. All right, after cooking the carrots for about a minute, I'm gonna add in the mushrooms and the onions. All right, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna cook that a couple minutes before I add in the kale and the garlic. Um, kale just cooks really easily and I don't wanna overdo it, so it goes in last. All right, after you've cooked the mushrooms and the onions in there for a couple minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add the rest of uh, my prepped vegetables here. So. The rest of my kale and the garlic. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna cook the kale and the rest of the vegetables until the kale starts to soften and the onions are translucent. This should probably only take a few more minutes. So as you can see, the kale and the onions are looking a lot more cooked. I don't wanna overdo it, so this is about perfect the way it is right now. The onions are turning translucent the kale has softened, but it's not like overly cooked and floppy and gross. Looks just perfect. All right, now in a small bowl, uh, we're gonna mix the aquafaba, which is the liquid inside of a can of beans. I know it sounds weird, but it is an excellent binder. Um, I've actually made uh, whipped cream with it too. So I know that sounds weird, but maybe it's a little weird. <laughs> you whip this long enough, you can make whipped cream. All right, so there's gonna be a quarter cup of aquafaba in here, um, which I'm gonna sift out of this can. Uh, we're gonna need two teaspoons of baking powder, um, a tablespoon of mustard, two tablespoons of ketchup, a tablespoon of paprika, a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. And that salt and pepper measurement leaves a little bit of room for you to add a little more if you want um, once you're serving the recipe. Um, of course, I try to keep the salt down because high sodium is not, not good for you. So two teaspoons of baking powder. And this is to uh, fluff up your loaf a little bit the best we can with a, a bean and veggie loaf, that is. All right, two teaspoons of that. I'm gonna do paprika, salt, and pepper. So, tablespoon of paprika. We're gonna add a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna put about a half a teaspoon of pepper in here. All right, so I'm gonna add all my wet stuff in there now. Tablespoon of mustard. All right, and then two tablespoons of ketchup. Last ingredient here, the quarter cup of aquafaba. I'm gonna get from a can of chickpeas. Then we're gonna use these beans later. All right, now I'm just gonna mix this up. All right, you see how it's all foamy from the aquafaba? You're gonna wanna pull out a processor. Um, biggest one you got. If you don't have a big processor, you're gonna have to do this in batches. Um, so I'm gonna add two cups of panko first and then we can add the rest of the ingredients. I've got a generic panko here, that's not my preference. Um, you can actually get a whole wheat panko. You know, I think I made exactly two cups of lentils. I got pretty lucky there. <laughs> All right, so we got 
two cups of lentils in there. I'm going to add the can of chickpeas. If you remember, I didn't, I didn't fil filter all the aquafaba out of here, so I'm going to go ahead and dump the rest out. All right, I'm going to add this to the processor now. Now I've got to add all the vegetables that we cooked into here. This is going to be, this is going to be pretty tight. We've got a lot of stuff. If you really need to, you can process this, process it a little bit to make some more room for, for more of the ingredients. But um, I don't want to overprocess anything, so I should all make it in here. I made it. It all, it all fit in there last time, so we should be good. Add our delicious veggies. They smell really good. Now I don't know how much of a vegetable fan you are, but I'm. A huge vegetable fan. Kind of ridiculously into produce. I'm sure you can guess, but this makes a pretty big loaf. And we still have to add the wet ingredients. So if you're at this point and you need to just process it a little bit to make some room, go for it. We just don't want to over process um, the beans and vegetables because then it'll just look more like a mush where we want to be able to still see some of the the vegetables and the texture of the vegetables in the loaf. Okay, so I'm going to add the wet mixture that I mixed together earlier. All right, so I managed to get the lid on there. Um, now we're going to process this, but we only want to process it enough to be able to bind the veggies and the beans together. So it appears that the um, all the vegetables and the beans are getting pureed a little bit, they're just not mixing together that well, but that's fine because I'm going to take it back out and um, incorporate all the ing ingredients together manually. So as I'm working on this recipe, um, I'm realizing that I should probably not add the panko to the processor. All right, I'm going to transfer this mixture into a bowl so I have a little better leverage uh, to stir. All right, just going to manually incorporate the rest of this since um, these ingredients didn't mix very well on the processor. It did break up the vegetables though, so we're good there. The vegetables and beans are processed enough that it's going to be able to harden into a loaf. All right, time to form it into a loaf. I'm just going to go ahead and plop it all into the center here. All right, now this is where you form it into a loaf, what looks like a meatloaf. And as you can see, it sticks together nice, but it's still nice and chunky. All right, final step. I'm going to smooth a third a cup of ketchup over the top, just like a traditional meatloaf, and then sprinkle a tablespoon of brown sugar. Um, you can omit the brown sugar if you want, but it's just a little bit of brown sugar and it caramelizes the top and it's delicious. So I wouldn't skip it, but if you're you're really watching your sugar, you can skip the... I'm gonna put a third a cup ketchup. It's after seven right now, so everyone's hungry. All right, lastly, a tablespoon of brown sugar. I'm gonna sprinkle it on there. Now we're gonna bake it 30 minutes on the center rack of the oven. All right, now we just gotta wait 30 minutes. All right, our meatless meatloaf is ready to take out of the oven. All right, so there you have it. Um, this is a very savory, delicious meatloaf. I know you're going to enjoy it, but not only is it delicious and savory, but um, it's also got almost a daily serving of fiber, almost twice as much daily value of vitamin D. And just because it's plant-based doesn't mean that there's no protein. This thing is full of protein. so. I hope you enjoy it. I hope your family loves it. I know they will. Let me know how it went for you in the comments and please share this recipe so everyone can benefit from how nutritious and delicious this savory meatloaf is.